Good morning, Coloritaville. Uh, today we're going to be coloring uh, line art skin tones. This is the one that we did last Saturday, all finished up, and she turned out quite nice. Thank you so much, Deb, for your color choices. I uh, copied almost all of them. <laughs> and she turned out beautifully. <laughs> Yours was absolutely gorgeous too. So what we're going to be coloring today is done by uh, Scott Hoden. And we're going to be doing the skin tones today. Um, I was going to do a skin tone comparison uh, next week between Crayola and Faber-Castell. Unfortunately, I cannot find my Crayolas. And I have looked on Amazon for a new set and I can't find them there either. So until I actually get a new set of Crayolas or locate my other ones, uh, what we're going to do next weekend is we're going to work on the hair colors. So just to let you know that that is something I still want to do. I just can't find my pencils, <laughs> <laughs> which is just really bad, but I gave them to my kids. So God only knows what, what an 18 year old did with them. <laughs> so we have one person watching, so we'll give it a little bit for people to come in before we start with uh, what we need to do and the pencils we're going to be using. I did leave a list of them um, on the description for this video. The only one that I don't have on there that I did add after because I couldn't find the pencil that I wanted uh, was 231, which is cold gray 2. for those of, the, of you that will watch backwards. But so far we have nobody watching. Nobody. Well, we have one person, two people. Yay! Yay. <laughs> but it's, it's one of those weird days, um, you know, I, it's really, really smoky out here, and there's a lot of fires all over Oregon, Washington, and California. So, you know, if uh, if you're all safe and sound and able to come watch, great. If not, uh, you know, I hope you get safe and sound. You know, it it has been a very trying year for everybody. Yeah. What do you want? You want to see something cool, Deb? Yeah. While we're waiting. Oh. Let's see. I've got it on the wrong camera. Let's put it over on the other camera so you can see it up close. Oh, wow. Did Bob print that? Yeah. Ooh. He printed it on his resin printer. Uh, the next one he's going to do, he's actually going to tell it to puncture a hole in the bottom it, to drain all this excess resin and then he's going to put a light in it for me and it hangs, oh. on, hangs on the Christmas tree oh, that's cool. see it says Merry Christmas there oh. let's see if I can back you off a little bit so it is in focus there we go yeah it says Merry Christmas there and it's got a little church so some little houses. Let's see if I can bring that into focus a little bit better. There you go. Yeah, that's better. Oh, wow. Turn the light on. The detail on that. Yeah. Oh, man. Wow, how long does something like that take, though? It must take a long time. No, in the resin printer, it doesn't take very long. I think it only took him, um, you know, a day at most. Mm -hmm. I think uh, just a couple of hours. In the other printer, it takes longer. But the resin printer, it's it's a liquid resin, and it just uh -huh. builds and builds and builds. But see, it's we have a. 3D printer at the library in the team department, and it takes forever. And then it'll get three quarters of the way done and mess up. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the joys. Of, <laughs> that's the joys of of the 3D printer. It just needs to be calibrated a bit. Um, sometimes you have to watch it uh, because the 
um, filament will jam and cause problems. It's the other camera. Okay, Bob says about six hours. Okay. Oh, thanks, hon. <laughs> I didn't realize he was in here. <laughs> But it's so pretty. He printed me a uh, one that in uh, filament as well. It's in the Christmas box, so that one will join it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we've got seven people in here. So let's get started on this. Although I don't know how many are going to. I can't see anybody but us. Oh, that's another thing I've got to do. Hold on a sec. Um, shoot. Hmm. Remember the name of the bot's name? <laughs> I do now. <laughs> Forgot to log that in. Oh, crap. Donna, I need you to text me um, your uh, your thing in my do. You know what I mean. Okay, so while we're waiting for Donna to send me that text, um, we're just going to get a little started here. This is really exciting to me because line art is not huge on my forte for coloring uh, skin tones without using marker first. <laughs> I always <Huh>. cheat, <laughs> especially <laughs> large areas of skin. Mm -hmm. And and this uh, picture does have some great areas of skin so we'll just grab thank you yes that is what i needed thank you so much but uh, line art is really great for large amounts of skin and sometimes especially if i'm not um proficient with the the artist if I don't use that artist a lot I have a tendency especially in large face pictures just to go over it with a base layer of marker but this time we are going to go full on out with uh, just pencil <laughs> so yeah. we'll see how this turns out so one of the first things we're going to do I'm going to switch over to the other camera and I have turned Nightbot on, so you will get little messages throughout uh, the stream of um, where you can donate, how you can donate, if you do want to assist us in providing content, as well as some of our contests. So I'm just going to switch you over to the close-up camera here. And I'm going to bring you in a little bit. Let's fix that focus. There we go. And there. Hey. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start at the hairline with the gray that I just mentioned. Now this is number 231, which is cold gray 2. I know you can't see it very well on that close-up camera, but so what we're going to do is we're just going to start at the hairline and we're just going to put a small amount of this just to show us where our grayscale or our shadow areas are. It's not going to be a grayscale, but it's just showing us where those shadow areas are. And it doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to go over it and it'll dull down some of those 
colors that we're going to go over it with. Okay. Now, another thing that Scott does that's really kind of helpful to us, as you can see, our light source is going to be coming from over here. So these areas here come down the, the bridge of her nose. These areas here aren't going to be as shaded as the areas over here on the other side of the face. So we're going to have to put a shade here. here a little bit of it here but use your gray and just put in a shadow everywhere that it would not see that light as much And I completely forgot because I always do. I wanted to introduce you to uh, Deb Lore, uh, Lorenz. She is one of our administration over at Coloritaville, uh, the Cozy Coloring Corner at Coloritaville and Facebook. Uh, she is joining me today and helping out as well as Donna who is in the chat also helping out with um, making sure your questions are answered and uh, catching things that I don't see because I'm looking at a picture. <laughs> so of course down here around the neckline because of the uh, high collar on her little jacket here is going to be a shadow as well. And down here as well. under her chin. Now normally I do this in a purpley color, but the color I normally do it in is in a different set of pets, pencils and I can't really tell you to go out and buy a set of pencils just because of the color. Hi Christina, glad you joined us. Thank you so much for joining us Christina. Now, of course, the necklace is going to have a bit of shadow as well. Now, I'm thinking that it's skin all the way down to the bow here. And possibly even beyond. I think it's just a little um, bra type corset thing there. And then the dress goes jacket dress area thing there the outer part of her clothing goes down past it so I'm going to color it in that manner that this is all skin down here That's the one thing about not being the the artist that drew it is you never know what they what they meant, you know. <laughs> you know, if they meant this, you know, for underneath of this to be a part of her clothing or if they meant it to be skin or and I, I just adore Scott's work. He this artist is got some beautiful, beautiful artwork. All right. 
And I think that's oh, part of the skin. We can't see you. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, you're going way down. Okay. Yeah, just give me a second here. I'll move you down. That's okay. I'll just see where you went. No, no thank you for letting me know because... I've got the camera really close so that I can show you what I'm doing. And you can't see what I'm doing if I'm <laughs> <laughs> off the camera, can you? And, you know, it's it's things like that letting me know that th that that's happening is why I, I absolutely love it when the girls join me. Because, yeah, like I said, I'm not looking at the, the screen as much. I'm looking at the picture and... Sometimes it just ends up not seeing everything. Hi, Dan. Hi, Dan. Make sure that you record this for the wife and the daughter. Well, I'm sure it's recording as we speak, but I know his wife is at work and his daughter is at her dad's, so. Uh, same old, same old. Sitting here coloring. Now, this side of her her arm is going to be shadowed more than the other side. So we're going to bring that gray up a little bit higher on this side of her arm. Same with underneath the bow here. This side here is going to be less of a shadow because it's more towards the light source. Of course, her sleeve is going to give a shadow, so make sure that you put a shadow in around her sleeve. And the crook of her arm is going to give a bit of a shadow as well. Christine is asking what book and what pencil. Um, she caught it. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you. <laughs> the image is, is done by uh, Scott Howden. Um, I can't remember. I placed all of the information in the description of the video so that uh, you can look up the book. It is available on Etsy. Now these areas down here are also going to get a shadow from the piece of earth that she's holding. Okay, and of course her, her the bend in her hand is going to cause a shadow down here on her wrist. Deb, your mic is making a funny noise. <laughs> My mic is? Yeah. What's it doing? I don't know. I, it, I'm hoping it's your mic, because if it's mine, then we're in trouble. <laughs> don't do it. I can't hear it. It's, it's um, uh, hard to explain what noise it is, but it's... Oh. Well, let me know. If it keeps doing it, I'll get off of here. Oh, no. You're not allowed to leave. <laughs> I don't even know where my mic is. It's in there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mine's on my headset, so. Okay. Now, of course, this side of her arm is also going to have a shadow a deeper shadow than this side 
but because of the way her arms are and her hands are splayed out here, this is going to have a shadow as well. It's just not going to be as, as much at the edge of her arm as it is down almost the center of her arm. Oh, Deb, that's a bummer. Oh, thank you so much, Dan. It's always helpful. Yeah. Oh, great. Should I stop breathing then? <laughs> She she can't really move the mic away from her mouth very much. I think um, it's connected to her PC. <laughs> Try to back up a little. <laughs> I've never done that before. Yeah. Maybe I just didn't know it. <laughs> okay, so we've got the gray areas covered. Um, I think we're just going to put a little bit more up here on her eyes as well as under her eyes where her eyelashes are going to be. And a little bit more here at the hairline. Okay. And if you feel that the the amount of gray isn't enough there for you, if, if you want a deeper shadow on that side of the face, of course, you know, you can add extra gray or add, you know, extra shading once we get into the shading colors um, in in the pencils themselves as well. Okay, so we've got the shadowing done. Now we're going to uh, go over everything with your cream. And the cream just gives a base layer the same as it did on the grayscale. And as you go over that gray area with the cream, it kind of stands out more and gives you an idea of where that color is going to lay. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be a, a heavy coverage. You just need just enough to give it that base layer to blend into. Don't forget her ear. <laughs> I almost forgot one of the fairy's ears last week. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't know what you forget. <laughs> I'm coloring along and I look and it's like, hmm, that's a little lopsided. <laughs> I forgot to color an ear. Don't go over the lips with the cream. No, she just, tells me. <laughs> just your skin tones. You can. You can. You can. The, the pink will overtake it, so it's okay. It took you literally. You said everything. <laughs> yes. Yes, I, I. Okay, fix it. No problem. <laughs> no, it, if even even if you do, it's uh, you're going light mm -hmm. enough with it that. It will just add to the pink. You know, if you're doing it very, very heavy handed, then I would suggest erasing it. Now, we've got a little tiny area here where the tree is in front of the face. 
and I completely missed it. We're going to do a little bit of a darker gray in that area. Okay. Just because when I go over that with the yellow, because I'm going to use yellow and oranges for the sun, it'll pick up that yellow and orange and brighten that up a bit. Okay. Oh, okay. Is that any better? I was just told my, my voice is a bit choppy, so. <laughs> yeah, she, she pulled the Donna. That's right, Donna. We're all wearing off on each other. Is that any better, Donna? I think so. Yeah, my internet keeps going up and down. So, you know, if, if I do disappear, I do apologize. Um, I will try not to, but sometimes I'm... I don't know why my computer just suddenly drops its internet. It drives me crazy. I think Bob was talking about uh, hardwiring me in, but uh, we'd have to actually have a contractor come out and hardwire the whole house because we don't want wires running across the house from one room to another. So we'd actually have to have somebody come and put the hard wires in through the walls. Okay, so once we've made her nice and jaundicey. I was just going to say, does she look jaundiced? Yep. Yeah, she yeah, she, she's going to look jaundicey. Looks kind of like how I feel right now. <laughs> she looks a little a little gray, yeah. Yeah, once we make her all nice and jaundicey, we will uh, start adding the actual skin tones. This is uh, one of the skin tones that, that Faber-Castell and uh, uh, Kitten Cloud are the one who actually taught me how to do skin tones, um, uses as a base tone. Like I said, normally I don't cover this much skin with just pencil. So this is an experiment of hopefully not uh, fruition for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I know how to do it. I just don't have the confidence sometimes to do it. And I'm not trying to be pretty with it or put a heavy layer of it on. I'm just shading as lightly as I can just enough that I can get that color on there yeah it's possible that it has something to do with the fires today is very very smoky so it's very possible Yeah, we're, we're still safe. Um, we're still not under evacuation orders at this point. So um, un unless that changes today, um, hopefully this weekend we're supposed to get some rain. So hopefully that uh, just gets rid of the smoke out of the air. We haven't had any good heavy winds, so it hasn't blown the fire the fires towards us so but they are creeping and there's there's zero percent contained and they're creeping along so we just have to hunker down and keep an eye on on the reports and alerts and everything else and stay inside as much as we can so that uh, we don't end up with too much smoke in our lungs and I was way off again. Sorry, guys. I got to back that camera up a bit, I think. I'm just going to back you off a bit so you can see the whole thing. I just didn't, I wanted to get closer for you guys, but I think that's uh, 
as close as I'm going to be able to get so that uh, you guys can actually see what I'm doing. <laughs> Okay, so we've got the yellow down. Well, the cream. It's a yellow to me. So now, next we're going to use the light flesh, which is number 132. And we're just, again, going over the entire thing. And you can go over the lips with the light flesh. And this, is, this layer is really light, so you don't have to go really heavy on this layer. We will be doing this layer again. So, this layer um, will be gone over with the white to blend it into the cream, and then we'll do our shadow areas. Okay. If I miss any areas, I apologize. I don't have my light on because it glares really bad on the camera. So, because I've got the lights behind me on so that you guys can see it better. Dan's asking if Bob's got the RV prepped. Yeah, it's it's uh, unplugged and ready to go if we need to go. I just have to figure out how to pack all my coloring supplies into it without, uh, you know, displacing anybody. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'll leave the kids behind. I gotta take my color and supplies. <laughs> hey. Well, I thought about it. The oldest kid drives, so and he's not gonna want to leave his car behind. So, <laughs> so fill it up. <laughs> oh, hope it doesn't come to that. Yeah, right. At this point, it doesn't look like it's going to. Um, like I said, it's it's the winds have calmed down quite a bit, and it's only creeping. But uh, it's the smoke that's killing us right now. Bob's highly mm -hmm. allergic to wood smoke. Oh my gosh! And it it really does his eyes and his his skin and his breathing and everything in so. It's not so bad in the house because we, like I said, we've got some really good filtration system. And we've got uh, air filter in his office as well as a water vacuum that filters the air. That I run three or four times a day. So <clears throat> in the house, it's not so bad. Say that as my throat decides that it's going to be all stuffy. <laughs> but I showed you pictures this morning, guys, of uh, in the admin people that are in here of what the smoke was like this morning, and it's it's perpetually like that. <laughs> it looks like it's dawn at all times. <laughs> So we're just lightly going over all of these skin areas with the light flesh tone. And we will darken that up as we go along. I know it doesn't look very, very fleshy yet. It looks very washed out. And, and don't worry, that is normal. That is what you want. <laughs> it's just starting to worry. You're looking pretty yucky. <laughs> Yeah, no, it, and that's the thing is, you know, sometimes, uh, like, and I used to do it all the time, is I would get halfway through something and it would look terrible and I would quit because it looked horrible. But I hadn't finished all the steps yet. <laughs> so it would, would be half done and I would expect it to look the same as 
the finished product that I was following. And it would, it would frustrate me and I would get so deterred that I just wouldn't continue it. And it's my own, you know, if you don't finish it all the way through and follow all of the steps, it's not going to look the same. <laughs> yeah, I'll grab an eraser if it looks um, bad. But right now it, it just looks like it's um, washed out. And that that's perfectly fine. That's normal. This is just the first layers that we're putting down and we want them to be light so that we don't lose all of the tooth of the paper. I have this printed on a 67 pound cardstock. I'm not sure what everybody else has got it printed on. So I can't really, you know, tell you what to print it on. <laughs> I can just tell you what I've printed it on. I find that the cardstock works really well with the polychromos and the um, thicker pencils. The, the oil-based pencils seem to work a lot better on this cardstock than in some of the coloring books. I find that the Prismacolors work really, really well in the coloring books. And I'm not sure if it's because it's a harder pencil that I'm putting more pressure on it or if I'm being too heavy handed with it for the coloring books or what, but I just find that it doesn't lay down as much color as I want in the coloring books as it does on cardstock. Okay, so we're almost done with this layer. In the next layer, we're going to do um, the shadow areas. Now, this is going to look very, very, very scary because it is a very dark color. And it may scare you. Don't let it scare you. It will be toned down. <laughs> so the next color we're going to use is magenta. And we used it before. We used it on the grayscale. So don't be afraid of it. And what we're going to do is we're going to go at the deepest part of the hairlines. And just very lightly put that shadow in. And bring that shadow up into her hair. Now I know having that magenta color, it's a very, very bright color so it is scary when you first use it but you just have to be very very light with it we will be going over it and of course do the inside of the ear where the line is don't go too deep into the ear just where the line is where where it all connects together there Just follow the line on her jaw, just at the very bottom of where you've put that grayscale. Because that's basically what we just did, is we just added our own bit of grayscale. Now underneath her jaw, we're going to go a little bit thicker, as well as at the back of her neck here. Exactly. <laughs> you know, there are some things that, that uh, I have done that I find that I can't fix. And I just start over at that point. 
So we're just following the, the black line of her jacket here. We're not going very, very deep because this area here has the light source. This area over here is going to get hit by that light source. So we're just going to do very fine down around her, her jacket. Same with underneath her necklace here or the chains that are holding the jacket together. I'm not sure which that is. It's a chain of some sort. And just the, the deepest areas that are going to have a darker shadow, add the magenta. If you find, if you feel that an area is going to have a really deep shadow like here, add more of it. Of course, you don't have to add too much at this point. If you find later on that it needs a little bit more, we can add it. If I'm doing this too quick for anybody, let me know. And if I lose you, let me know. Because, like I said, I'm not watching the chat too much here. Or the, the screen. <clears throat> now, in between the fingers is always a deeper shadow. Especially when the fingers are held together. And down here, I know you guys are upside down. Down here around her sleeves is going to be a deeper shadow. Now you don't have to go all the way around the sleeve, just in the deep shadow areas. Now this area here is going to have a much deeper shadow so we're just going to go a little bit deeper here because it's on the other side of her of the light source okay same with here and here Now around her eyes, let's swing you back around here. Do her eyelid where her eyelids come together. Down the bridge of her nose. Under her nose in the nostril areas. Now, like I said, this side of her face is going to be more shadowed than the other side of her face. So we're going to add a little bit more of this darker color to give that shadow. We're on this side of the face, we're only going to do a little bit around her eye and around her eyebrow here. And under her lip. And above.
of her lip. Okay. Okay, so that's our deepest shadow areas. Now we're going to take the sanguine uh, pencil, which is number 188. And we're going to finish off those shadow areas and bring them down into the face. And go over top of the magenta with it and just lightly bring it down into the face. And we are going to go over this to blend it in with the white and then with the light skin tone. So everywhere that you've put the gray, you're going to lightly go over that with this sanguine. I hope that makes sense to people, but <clears throat> sorry, your smoke is getting me in the mood. <laughs> the smoke is getting you way over there, is it? <laughs> yeah. Now we're not going to go too far into this side of the face because we're going to actually take a the white onto this side of the face and we're actually going to go really heavy here and put that as the light coming through from the, the sun on that little diorama there on on the piece of earth that she is protecting. Mm -hmm because that is what she is, the protector of Earth. And once you go around that with your white, then you can go over it with your sanguine, and it will give it a, a yellowy red color. It just gives that white a little bit of a glow and gives you the ability to go around that area with the sanguine and leave that white line there. Okay, so now we're just going to go down into the neck area. And like I said, anywhere that you've put the magenta as well as the gray, go over it with the sanguine and bring it out a little bit from where you've colored with the magenta. Okay, and what I mean by out is like this area here, we know we don't want a huge amount of shadow, but we still want enough that it looks like the jacket is shadowing. Same with down here, we want the shadow of the necklace because we have a, a light source hitting it. Anywhere that you see that it would be a shadow, put a shadow in. 
Just remember your light source is coming from here. So anything that is blocking that light source is going to cause a shadow. If it's blocking it very heavily, you're going to get a heavy shadow like here. You may get a heavier shadow from her hand. Where here, if we were coloring her, her jacket, would have a bright area because the, the sun would be hitting onto it. Okay. Alrighty. Just give me a second here. I don't know what's going on there, but for some reason my phone just vibrated off my desk. <laughs> oh, yeah. Turn it and turn it off so the ringer doesn't work, you know, and so I don't get really loud noises next to you guys and it just vibrates right off my desk. It's alive. It's alive. Okay, so I hope I'm still able to you're still able to see what I'm doing. Yep. And the reason why I keep turning you is because it just makes it easier on me. I need to turn the picture. I do it constantly while I'm coloring. Just to bring oh. the area that I'm coloring closer to me. I do too. just makes it easier for me to see. Now we've got the shadow area down here through the center of the arm because this side is going to have that light source coming down on it. And you don't have to be particularly heavy on some of these areas. You can be, but you don't have to be. So I hope that's starting to look a little bit better. I know she still looks really pale, but. Well, usually by now mine looks like mud, so this is good. <laughs> <laughs> well, as long as it doesn't look like mud yet, it's. I make mud so easily. Okay, so we're just going to get down in here and this arm is blocking a lot of light. So this area here is going to be a lot darker and we're going to actually address that with a darker shade of skin tone in the center area here. But in the areas that have things that would cause shadows, we're going to put a little bit more of a shadow with the sanguine over the gray, but we're, we're going to actually add further shadow and further depth to that with a darker skin tone as well. Here we are going to go all the way around her sleeve, not just in the areas that we use the magenta. Just everywhere that you've put that gray, add the sanguine. I am not using an electric sharpener right now. Thanks to Deb and Donna, I am using this right now. The sharpener that I have been using is called a boss, boss Titch. Um, my husband bought it for me and it's a great sharpener. I just worry that uh, you guys can hear it too much and it's too loud. It's supposed to be ultra silent 
and I don't find it ultrasound myself, so. But it's a great sharpener. The one that the girls have um, have me using, it's wonderful. I love this sharpener. <laughs> I liked my crank sharpener. I had one, but it started tearing my desk apart. So I had to stop using it. And Deb and Don, Donna told me about this one. And it's like, oh, cool. <laughs> so that's what I'm using now. It's $11 on Amazon. And I will... Uh, I put the links to it in my last video when I was showing it off. But I will leave a link to it in this one as well. Now we're just, like I said, just going over that gray coloring that we already put in. And if you feel that it needs a little bit deeper, go a little bit deeper with it. It's not going to hurt it. Like I said, if if it's too deep, then we will be knocking it down quite a bit with the skin tones again. So don't be afraid to use the color. If the color is too dark, we will we will blend it down with a little bit of white and a little bit of the lighter shade of skin tone and bring it right down. Okay. So we've got most of the shading done, the shadowing done now. What we're going to do is we're going to take uh, cinnamon. Where is cinnamon? We're going to take cinnamon and we're going to color in the ear. And these areas where the skin tone is going to be darker. Like the side of the face there. This side of her eye. Go into your, your shadowed areas. Yeah, the the sharpener that they that uh, I just showed you, it's yeah, Dahl one thirty three, and it seems to work really nice. I've only had it for a short time, but I like it. Now we're just going into the areas that we've added the sanguine, and we're going over it with the cinnamon to blend it together with those other shades and just moving it a little bit further into the hairline. If you find it's too far into the hairline, don't worry about it. We will be fix, you know, covering up most of that with the hair colors when we get to that. Right now we're just concentrating on the colors of the skin. Now, if you find that the cinnamon isn't dark enough for you and you want it a little bit darker, use the medium skin tone. I find that the medium skin tone is pretty dark for a light skin tone. One of these days I will have to get brave and, and do a dark skin tone. I have never done one before. They kind of scare me. <laughs> so. Yeah, 
Yeah, me too. I have so many sharpeners and so many of them, like my electric sharpeners, I they all work great, but they're loud. And you can't take an electric sharpener camping with you. <laughs> well, you can because I have an RP, but, you, know. you can, but <laughs> probably not today. Well, I have an RV, but usually when I color uh, in the RV, it's when Bob is uh, still asleep because I get up really early. And I try to let him sleep as long as possible because he works really hard and deserves it. So I uh, try to let him sleep as long as I can let him sleep for. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And and that's the problem I was getting too with uh, the hand held sharpeners is I was getting so many broken leads. It was driving me crazy. No matter what I did, I'd break a lid. I followed their instructions and turned the sharpener, I turned the pencil, I turned, you know, <laughs> no matter what I did, I had broken leads all the time. Okay, so as you can see, we've covered these areas here where, where her arm is going to definitely give a big shadow with the darker skin tone, the, the cinnamon. We've brought that shadow on her arm here down a little bit with the cinnamon. And bringing this shadow up a little bit with the cinnamon. Now your pressure can start getting a little bit harder here. You know, it doesn't, you don't have to do this area as lightly as the other areas because it is very close to the same skin tone as you're going to be covering it up with. We are going to go over this again with the light skin tone. So anything you do at this point is going to be blended into that and toned down by that. So if you do go a little heavy in an area, don't worry about it. Like I said, that light skin tone is going to come through and it's going to lighten that up for you. Just remember on her hands, at the tips of her fingers, there's going to be a light coming off of this sun. So you're gonna to wanna to do that and leave that alone try not to color those areas because you're going to want to do those with the the yellows of the sun. That's another thing is sometimes I don't, when I color a picture, I, I get fixated on a certain area and I forget to look at the whole picture. And I'll do this and I'll color this, all the, the right colors for the skin tone. And then I'll look at it and going, okay, well, there should have been a highlight there and it should have been a highlight there. Well, that's too dark now. <laughs> I have a tendency to do that, especially if I've gone over it with marker and you sit there going, okay, now what? <laughs> okay. So now we're just going to finish up her hand here. Just bring some of that flesh tone in here. And I know I'm doing this fairly quickly, so if it's really messy, I apologize. But I'm trying not to keep you guys here all day. Because a picture like this normally would take me two or three hours just to get to this point, so. Because I am you know, that much of a perfectionist. I'll turn on my really, really bright light and I will get down and I'll fixate on like little tiny areas, especially if there's um, colors, uh, the, the white of the page showing through the colors. <laughs> I get really bad with that. I get overly fixated on it and It'll take me hours to blend it out and 
color it out. <laughs> okay, so now what we're going to do is we are going to go back over it. And first, we're going to go over it with the white just to blend those together. Now you can do this with the colorless blender. I like doing it with the white at this point because I like to be able to dull down some of that magenta if I've got too heavy of magenta on it. Hi, Darcy. Hi, Darcy. <coughs> now don't press too hard with your white because you will end up putting a, a highlight area like over here where I did the really hard white and I don't want to do that right yet I just want to bring those skin tones together now I did I did do what I told everybody not to do and forgot the ear Again. <laughs> I'm just going just lightly over the areas that we've done. Don't worry too much about doing the entire face, just where we've put in the different colors to bring those all together. And then we'll go over it with the light skin tone just to bring it all together just that much more. and to give the colors of the skin a little bit more depth so that it doesn't look so washed out. Now, if you do find that you have certain areas that are a little bit too dark, after we've gone over it with the lighter skin tones again just go over them with your white or your skin lighter skin tone don't do it too many times with the lighter skin tone because it will make that area look really dark because the more layers you put on the more color you put down Now we're not going to go over this area here with the lighter skin tones unless you find that yours is too dark. If you find it's too dark, go over it and press a little bit harder with the white. Of course, I'm not showing you, but this area here where we've done the darker skin tone. So if you find it's too dark, go just press a little bit harder with the white while you're blending that together. Who did? Not showing everybody? <laughs> I'm constantly doing that. Missing the ear, I think. Oh, missing the ear, yes. Always, always miss one area. It's really funny because sometimes I will miss it completely, post it, have to take it yeah. down. I have to take it down because I've missed coloring half of a pic half the picture, Because, but I'm so proud of the other half. <laughs> I'm so happy with the other half that I have to post it and I've missed a bunch of things on, on one side of the picture. It's, it's comical. Do it all the time. And then I quickly take it down before anybody sees it. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've learned to start posting things on my own page first. <laughs> Good idea. Just so, it, you know, when I do post it, because I look at it and I, I go over it and make sure everything's okay with it or if I need to tweak anything. or And I always, always, always forget to put in 
the stars or <laughs> you know I miss, miss an ear you know things like that always forget something all right so we're going to go back over this with the light flesh which is 132 and we're going to cover everything including the lips <laughs> okay and try to get it evenly as possible and we will come back through and do our, our lighter areas in a few minutes because I'm going to cheat with those and I'm going to use an eraser yes hmm. Just because it's one of the tools that is very underrated in coloring is the eraser. The eraser is a fantastic tool that a lot of colorists don't use enough, especially for highlights and stuff like that. You don't have to use a gel pen or uh, uh, any sort of Posca pen or anything else sometimes if you just have a eraser and for those gentle areas you know sometimes if you want a really sharp highlight definitely use the gel pen for those gentler highlights you don't need to use a gel pen. You can just use an eraser. Now, hopefully I'm still in, in the screen. Nobody's yelled at me saying, I can't see what you're doing. <laughs> And I haven't been turning my pencil enough and I can feel it. Yeah, I noticed that too, Donna. There's definitely a lag. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't know what it is. It's weird. Bob doesn't seem to be having any troubles, mind you. And it could be that, you know, I've got four people in my house who are all on the computers. And more than likely, the boys are playing extremely internet-sucking games. <laughs> oh, they love to play those games that use all the bandwidth. <laughs> Especially my youngest. Now, like I said, I'm not going over this as carefully as I normally would. Just because I don't want to keep you guys here all day. So I am going to actually uh, do this as quickly as I can and still have it look good. <laughs> and hopefully, you know, what I what I would like to see next week before we do the hair and I I will do it but I I would like to see what that I would like to see everybody finish her clothing and everything else and then next week we will finish her off with her hair 
So you got a week to color her clothing and everything else. <laughs> and if you don't get it done, you don't get it done. Homework. Homework. <laughs> yes, can you tell I'm homeschooling my child? <laughs> Giving yeah, everybody homework. <laughs> hey, this is great. And if you don't get it done, you don't get it done. I won't, I won't <laughs> punish you for it. <laughs> you won't get detention, I promise. <laughs> I'm already in detention. <laughs> exactly. Uh, you guys can join me in my detention. Yeah. There's always a lag between StreamYard and um, YouTube, but uh, I have my, my YouTube chat open, so there shouldn't be too much of a, a lag. I don't know why. If I'm being choppy again, I'm really sorry. It's not choppy. Yeah, but there's always a lag between StreamYard and, uh, and YouTube. I don't hmm. know what, what that is caused by, if it's caused by StreamYard or by YouTube itself uploading. But if you watch your StreamYard chat and then watch your, your YouTube chat, uh, there is always a delay there. All right, so I'm just going down her hands here and I'm running out of room. <laughs> and I know this is messy. I don't usually do up and down, but I'm going to, um, go through and I'm going to blend this and then I'm going to put in the highlights with the eraser the best I can. Like I said, sometimes it's better. Uh, I find it's a lot better to put the highlights and everything else in. The shadows you can put in before you color everything, but sometimes I find that it's easier to put the highlights in and where you're like the yellow from your sun and that sort of thing is going to go after everything's all colored because then I can take a look and say, okay, well that needs a bit of yellow there and that needs a bit of yellow there and that needs a little bit of red there. At the end of the picture, instead of at the start of the picture, if you, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. Okay. So now we're going to do her lips. I'm just going to go over her lips with the light skin tone because I have avoided it at this point. And then we're going to take the fuchsia and we're just going to go into the crevice of her lip and give her that shadow there. Just give her the little shadows that uh, lips will give. And then we're going to go over that with a middle or a pink matter lake. The neighbor's drumming. My neighbor picked up drumming. Mm 
Oh, nice. Yeah, she's actually pretty good at it. If she was horrible at it, I'd probably you know, have a problem with it. But she's actually pretty good at it. <laughs> Okay, so as you can see, I left the areas here lighter just to show the light source. And that way you don't have to erase it. Um, it's easier to erase on the face because it's a large area and it's just easier that way. Okay, so our skin tone is done. Hopefully that looks all right to everybody. Yeah. I don't know if everybody is following along, but I hope you are. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to run my dusting brush over it. Make sure that I don't have any large amounts of dust on it from my pencils. So that I don't end up rubbing that into the areas that don't need it. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my handy dandy little finger thingies here. Oh, oh. You don't have your finger thingies. I'll find them real quick. <laughs> and you just take a clean one of these. You can buy these on Amazon. I had them on one of my videos and I have left links for them. So hopefully you guys followed those and picked them up. And we're just going to gently, in little circles, blend the skin tones together. Hmm. And what this is going to do is it's just going to take those little lines from the pencil in those little areas that you have a little bit too much white spot. And it's just going to knock them down. And of course, I've got too much light behind me, so hold on a second. I'll turn that off after I finish this part. I need the light behind me or my bright light in front of me to see what I'm doing. <laughs> the little tiny light on my camera isn't quite enough for me to see exactly what I need to see. So I figured the light behind me was a little bit brighter and didn't quite blind the camera than my big light, which is really bright and blinds the camera. Okay, so we're just going to knock some of that down. Anywhere that you feel that the colors aren't quite coming together or you've got a sharp line, you, you can use a blender pencil for this. I find it's faster just to use one of these. Yeah, that's been good. And I forgot to go over her ear. <laughs> I know, right? I was just going to say, we found out her ear. Dang ears. I have a thing about ears, I guess. Yeah. They just don't need color. <laughs> ears don't need that's color. To be right. There. <laughs> I remembered her ear. All right, mm -hmm. so. Alexa, turn off the kitchen lights. Okay. All right, so I've turned yeah, off. My Alexa just lit up. <laughs> yep. Alexa, stop. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then. <laughs> Is your Alexa trying to turn off your kitchen lights, too? Probably about to freak because she can't turn my kitchen lights off. <laughs> She's about to say down. She's about to say, that is not in... Oh, what, how do they say it? That is not... Uh... Oh, I can't remember how... Sorry, I can't find anything connected. Yeah, that, that's it. So just a little bit on the tip of her nose here with the eraser. Okay, and then... <laughs> Uh-oh, eraser. Well and just a little bit on the side of her cheek. Just in those areas that you're going to have a little bit of that 
redness from the sun in the middle of her forehead here a little bit. Take your brush, get the boogers off her face. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> And if you find that you've taken too much off, of course, you can put it back on. Just remember which colors you've added. <laughs> I was just All thinking, right. oh, great, backing up would be hard. No, not really. Okay, so I feel I have taken a little bit too much off here. So I'm just going to add a little bit more in. And same here. Try to take it off as evenly as possible. You don't have to rub hard. You just have to drag it over a little bit. All right. Now I'm going to turn that off. Haha, ha, your Alexa ignored me. <laughs> if I say it too loud, mine won't. All right. So I'm going to switch over to the other camera here. Just so I can give you the full picture. Oh. Mm. And I hope that all of yours looks like that. If it does not, that's fine too. I did forget an area that I want to have some light on, which is right down her arm here. And of course, you know, I will fiddle with it and faddle with it because that's just what I do until it's absolutely perfect. But I don't want to do that on the stream and have it take four hours. <laughs> now it's already taken an hour and a half. So um, if anybody that is still watching uh, does have any, in, any questions or um, any problems or it would like any f clarification on anything, um, I will be happy to answer any of those questions or help you out in any way with those. Like I said, next week we will be doing her hair. So if you guys want to go ahead and color this area and the um, jacket and her, her little blouse, you are welcome to do it. Actually, I did completely mess up. Who can see where I messed up? Can anybody see where I messed up? No. This blouse is see-through. And we did not. <laughs> no, it isn't. <laughs> no. <laughs> exactly. Do not burnish. Uh, if you do burnish, um, before you have all your color on, you will not be able to uh, add any more color. So what I'm what I'm going over this with because I do want it to be just a light color of skin tone on her arm here, underneath this blouse because the, the blouse color is going to go over this. I'm using the dark or medium skin tone. That's why I grabbed that pencil out and put it in with the ones that we were going to use because I looked at the picture and I thought I'm going to have to do a skin tone on that. So just color, loosely color this arm 
course, around the edges and your darker skin tone where there's going to be a shadow. And then loosely color over that with your, your lighter color. You don't have to do heavy because you're going to have the color of that you choose for this blouse going over top of it and showing that the blouse is see-through. I'll turn off the light when I'm done just to give you an idea of what I have colored here and what I've accomplished with it. And I'm just barely going over everything just to give it a pink tone like as a continuation of her arm. And like I said, just do it really loosely because this is going to be colored over as well with the color of whatever color you choose to put her blouse as. Of course, once again, we go over it with the... The re another reason why I use these these for blending instead of a blending pencil or a burnishing pencil or anything like that is because it doesn't knock the tooth of the page down. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so there, that's better. So do you understand what I mean when I'm saying that that's going to be see through? So mm -hmm. you still have the areas of the blouse itself where you're going to be able to add that color and have it look like it's see-through on top of skin. Okay. Okay. Now. Huh. And I think, do you guys think this is her, a part of her arm? I don't know. I think that's a part of her arm. By the way that her arm is against her blouse here, I think she has this arm the same way. And I think we missed a part of her arm. So, aren't we cool? <laughs> and of course, these are all the little tweaks and whatnot that you end up doing as you go along because you look at it going, okay, that doesn't look right there. So you end up going, okay, well, I'm going to make that a part of her arm. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm going to make this a part of her arm. Because I think it's pretty much the same as this part of her arm. Mm -hmm. Is what I'm hoping. Yeah. I'm hoping I'm on, this, uh, on the right page. But if not, eh. That's what erasers are for, right? Now, I didn't go over it with the cinnamon or the sanguine because it's going to be darker. I'm just going to go over it with the light a little bit heavier than I did on the first areas. And then I'm going to take the dark skin tone and I'm just going to do this whole area in the dark skin tone. And then we're just going to clean that up and off we go. Because that is going to be highly shadowed there. So now hopefully that looks all right. Okay, so is there any questions or comments that I need to address? Anything anybody wants to know how to do before we go off? Or anything that you're not sure about or anything like that? Okay, well, seems like we have no chatter, so... Okay, well, I thank you all for joining us. I greatly appreciate everybody that has come to visit, and hopefully I get to see lots and lots of uh, finished, or almost finished, um, projects next week. 
um, next Saturday, of course, as long as we're still here safe and sound, I will be doing the hair and doing as much as I can in showing you how to get the hair done. Um, until then, thank you so much for watching. Keep coloring and always, always, always don't stress about it. Any, everything can be fixed. Nothing is permanent. And if it is, then we can always reprint and move on. <laughs> With that, I thank you so much for joining me. Have a great day, everybody. Have a wonderful week. And uh, if you want to join us over on our Facebook page, that is uh, the Cozy Coloring Corner at Coloritaville. The links are in the about area underneath this video. Just make sure you fill out the application form in full. We definitely uh, will love to have you with us, but we do require that that application form be filled out in order to be accepted. Until next time, have a great day, have a wonderful week, and I can't wait to see all your pictures in the group. Until then, bye-bye for now. Bye. You say bye bye now. Bye. Okay, <laughs> just making sure, because you know we gotta have Deb say bye too. All right, <laughs> bye guys. Have a great week.